Hello students, welcome. Previously, lesson 10, form 3, topic 3, we were dealing with the other chemical properties of alkenes. So today, lesson 11, we want to proceed to the third class of hydrocarbon, which is alkynes. So we start by knowing what alkynes are. And we're saying alkynes are a group of hydrocarbons which contain at least a triple bond between two carbon atoms in a molecule. Remember, we're having three classes of hydrocarbons. One was called alkanes. And we said in between two carbon atoms in alkanes, we have only a single bond. So second class of hydrocarbons, we were having alkenes. And we said alkenes in between two carbon atoms in a molecule, we have a double bond. Then the third class of hydrocarbon is alkynes. And we said in between two carbon atoms in alkynes, we have a triple bond. So we are saying hydrocarbons in which at least a double bond or a triple bond are present in, a, in the molecule are said to be unsaturated hydrocarbons. So remember we said al alkanes are saturated hydrocarbons. Alkenes and alkynes are unsaturated hydrocarbons. So we are saying the presence of the triple bond in alkynes is easily broken to accommodate more atoms and it determines the chemical properties of alkynes. The functional group for alkynes is the triple bond. Remember, we said alkenes have no functional group, but when we're dealing with alkene, they have double bond as their functional group. When we're dealing with alkyne, they have triple bond as their functional group. So when we're dealing with alkyne, we have the triple bond as the functional group. So we are going to proceed to nomenclature of alkynes and we are saying the name of alkynes is similar to that of alkenes and alkenes. Alkynes have names which ends with the suffix Y and E. Alkenes, al alkynes, that's what we have here, alkynes have a general formula of Cn, H2n minus 2, where N represents the number of carbon atoms in a molecule. N is equal to 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, like that. And we say the first member of alkyne series is a di, which is written Cn, I mean C2, H2, because at least two carbon atoms are necessary for a triple bond to be formed. So the first member of alkene is methane. The first member for alkene is ethene. And the first member of alkyne is a di. Because we are saying for a double bond or for a triple bond to be formed, at least two carbon atoms is necessary. So we are going to see the table below shows the names, the names, the molecular formula, the structural and skeletal formula of the first five members of the alkyne series. So here we have the number of carbon atoms. We say N starts from two because we cannot have N equal to one. So the first member is called a line and its molecular formula is written like this. So how have we gotten that? Remember, the general formula for alkynes was Cn H2n minus 2. Okay, when we are talking about ethyne, ethyne has two carbon atoms. So we are going to replace 2 where we see n. So we are going to have C2H. 2 times 2 is 4 minus 2 is 2. So that's how we are going to write the molecular formula for ethyne. We go and see the molecular formula for boromine. We are going to, to finish first of all the molecular side. So we go to the structural formula and also condense the structural formula. Okay, we are going to go to boromine. Boromine has three carbon atoms. So if we put it in the formula, we are going to have C3H. 2 times 3 is 6 minus 2. We are going to have 4. That's why we are going to have C3H4. We go to botine. Botine is having four carbon atoms. So we are going to have C4H. H, we are going to have 4 times 2, that's 8, minus 2, that's 6. So we are going to have C4H6 as our molecular formula. So we go and see bentine. So how are we going to do? Still, we are going to have the same thing. C, then bentine has 5 carbon atoms. So we are going to see C5H. 2 times 5 is 10, minus 2, we are going to have 8. So that's how we have written it like that. The lastly, hexane. Hexane contains six carbon atoms, so we're going to have C6H. Two times six is twelve. 
minus 2, we are going to have 10. So that's the molecular formula for hexane. So last, you can do the molecular formula for heptine, octane, nonine, and also decine on their own. Next, let's proceed and see how we are going to do the open structural formula. So first of all, you have to know how many carbon atoms we have in a dye. We have two carbon atoms. Remember, in between two carbon atoms in alkyne, we said we have triple bonds. So how many bonds are you going to remain with this carbon? Only one bond. The other carbon, only one bond. So we are going to put hydrogen, hydrogen on both sides. So when you check, it's having two carbon. That's C2, then we're having two hydrogen, that's H2. If you want to do the one for borobine, we ask ourselves how many carbon atoms do we have in borobine? Three carbon. So we're going to have one, two, three. But remember, the first two carbon atoms in between them, we have a triple bond. So that means this carbon will have only one hydrogen here, and this carbon is already filled up one, two, three, four. So we are not going to put any hydrogen there. But this one here is supposed to have three hydrogen. So when we check one, two, three, that's C3, then H4, one, two, three, four, that's the H4 that we are going to see. That's how we do the open structural formula for alkynes. Let's go and see condensed structural formula. So you can do condense once you know how to do open structural formula. So this is open structural formula. So for us to do condense, we are supposed to know the first carbon, how many hydrogen does it attach to? Only one, as you can see here. Then we go to the second carbon again. How many hydrogen does it attach to? Only one. So you can write the condensed structural formula for a line like that. Or you can show the triple bond. You, you are still correct. We proceed to borobine. You have three carbon atoms. So we ask ourselves, the first carbon, how many hydrogen has it touched to only one? So I would say one. Then we're having triple bond. Then what about the second carbon? No hydrogen is attached to the second carbon. So we proceed to the third. How many hydrogen does it touch to the third carbon? Three. So we're going to have three layers. So CH triple bond, C, CH3. You can show the triple bond or you can not show the triple bond. There's no problem. So that's how we're going to do the condensed structural formula. Okay, we can have a small formula for us to, 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 to write the structural formula, the condensed structural formula for alkynes. And this is the formula. The formula is that the first carbon always has one hydrogen. The second has no hydrogen. You have to know that the third and the fourth and all those they are going to have two hydrogen then remember the last carbon is supposed to have three hydrogen for example if we are dealing with this bentine we are told to write the condensed structural formula for bentine we ask ourselves how many carbon do we have we have five carbon that means the first carbon has one hydrogen the second has no so here we have the third and the fourth then the fifth is going to have three hydrogen then we said in between the second and also the last the ones that come under there they are going to have only two hydrogen so this is how we are going to write the condensed structural formula for bentine let's just try to check whether we are correct or not so we're having ch c ch c we have ch2 ch2 we have ch2 ch2 we have CH3, which is CH3. That's the other formula that we can use. Here, we have a skeleton formula. So the way you you know to, to draw the, the skeleton formula for alkene is the same for alkenes and also alkynes. The only change is that when you're dealing with alkene, there's no bond, there's no double bond or there's no triple bond. Everything is single bond. But when we're talking about alkene, we have double bond. When we're talking about alkyne, we have triple bond. For example, we want to do borobine. Borobine has three carbon. So what I can do is I can draw it like this. So this is borobine because I don't see any double bond. Because this is the first carbon, this is the second carbon, and this is the third carbon. So everything is single bond. But if I want to put it borobine, that means borobine in between two carbon atoms, we have a double bond. So we're going to have something like that. That's borobine. So if I want to talk about borobine, in between two carbon atoms, we have a triple bond. So I'm going to have a third bond here. So this is the, the skeleton formula for borobine. So let's proceed. 
to naming of alkyne compounds and we are saying naming of alkynes is based on the following rules number one we are saying the longest continuous carbon chain must contain the carbon carbon triple bonds this chain is numbered such that the carbon atoms having the triple bond have the lowest possible value as shown in the examples below so let's check the examples example one we are supposed to name this compound so to name this compound first of all i have to see the parent name and we are saying one two three four five one two three four five so the parent name is having pent as it is prefix then we check do we have a triple bond yes in between the first two carbon atoms we have a triple bond so when we are numbering we start from the one so we're going to have one we don't have any other triple bond and we are going to deal with to write the suffix for alkynes which is y and a so we're going to have bent one y and e so if we check example two we are having the longest chain to be five one two three four five again so we are going to have bent then the triple bond is in the first carbon one then the suffix is y and e so do we have an attachment yes we have a metal attachment so what is the number for this so we start numbering from this side so this is one this is two and obviously that's three so we're going to have three methyl bent one y and e like that so we go and proceed to the third the third we have one two three four five carbon so still we are having bent then we are having the triple bond in between the first and the second so we are going to see third then this is the fourth and this is the fifth so to name this we have two attachments of the same kind so we are going to say three three because they are in the third carbon then i'm going to say dimethyl bent one yna then we proceed to the fourth one four carbon atoms one two three four the triple bond is in between the first and the second so we are going to have both one y and a then we have two attachments which are placed on the third carbon so we are going to say three comma three dimethyl both one y and a that's how we are going to name so next let's proceed to isomerism in alkynes so we are saying alkynes show branching isomerism and also positional isomerism just like alkenes so we start with first of all branching isomerism we are saying this occurs when a substitu substituent group is attached to the longest carbon chain containing the carbon carbon triple bond for example the branch isomer of bent one y and e is like this so we're going to have four carbon in the longest chain one two three four that in the third the fifth carbon is now becoming an attachment so to name this this will be three methyl both one y and e so next we have positional isomerism and we are saying the position of the triple bond in alkyne molecule can change from one carbon to another this results in the formation of two or more compounds with the same molecular formula but different structural formula for example we are having but one y and e and then we have but two y and e so all these are for the positional isomerism for both time because the first one it's placed in the first carbon the triple bond and here it's placed in the second and the third between the second and the third so in the reading we take the least or the lowest possible value when we say in a line and bromine do not show positional isomerism so next we proceed to preparation of alkynes and we are going to see laboratory preparation of ethyne gas and this is the setup that we are going to use here we have a dropping funnel containing water and here we have flat bottom flask containing calcium carbide with sand we are having ethyne gas collected over water and we are saying ethyne is prepared from the reaction of water on calcium carbide the reaction is slightly dynamic that means the reaction produces heat and thus a layer of sand should be put in the flask and to absorb excess heat to prevent the reaction flask from breaking this is the reaction that produces ethane gas this is how we write calcium carbide it's written csc2 which is solid reacting with two moles of water which is liquid we are going to get calcium hydroxide which is aqueous and also ethane gas which is a gas we say note the flask must be 
dry before the start of the experiment to avoid formation of ethane gas before the setup is complete. And we're saying copper 2 sulfate is used as a catalyst. Let's proceed to the physical properties of ethane gas. And you say number one, ethane is a colorless and non poisonous gas. Number two, it has a pleasant smell. Number three, it is less denser than air. And number four, it is slightly soluble in water, but soluble in organic solvents such as methyl benzene and also tetrachloromethane. So next, we are going to proceed to physical properties of alkynes. And this is a table that we are going to use. In this table, we have the name of alkynes, their molecular formula, their melting, and also boiling points. So we are saying, if you check the melting and the boiling points, they are going to increase along the series due to the increase in the molecular formula or in the molecular mass. Okay, so here we are saying like alkanes and alkenes. Alkynes are, color are colorless gases, liquids, and solids that are not poisonous or non-toxic. They are insoluble in water, but soluble in organic solvents such as methyl benzene and tetrachloromethane. We say next, the melting and the boiling points of alkynes increases along the series. And the reason is, this is due to the increase in the carbon atoms and the number of carbon atoms, which increases the strength of the intermolecular forces of attractions. Then we say the density of alkynes increases along the series. And this is due to the increase in the molecular mass. Then we are saying the solubility of alkynes decreases along the series. The reason this is due to the increase in the molecular size or in the molecular mass. Solanas, that's the end of our lesson today. Thank you for watching.